It's a lockdown, baby. You drive me crazy. Ain't no escaping. Your love's got me doing time. You're my attorney, judge and jury. I'm feeling guilty, so lock me up and throw away the key. Welcome to Nerds Gone Rogue, episode 149. Uh, Those were some sweet rhymes. They were some sweet rhymes. Uh, that is the voice of Corey Deering, Nerds Gone Rogue's video in chief, fearless leader, and not a legend once. He's a legend twice. Double legend Corey Deering, how we call him. How why, am I, him why am I double legend now? I, I don't remember. I made uh, it up last week. I, 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 I don't know. You can uh, find him at... Uh, <clears throat> Corey in HD 713 on Twitter. Corey in HD everywhere else except PlayStation, where he is Rogue Spartan number four. That's me. That is him. How are you, sir? You good? I'm, dude, I'm I'm a little bit tired, but I'm also very excited. Cool. My name is Matt. Because of E3. Yeah, that's fine. Let me finish the show intro, please. Thanks. I'm sorry, you asked me how I was doing. I, was I did, sorry. and then I interrupted. I'm if you want to, if you want to ask me how I'm doing, why don't you ask me after you intro the show? I, you know, <laughs> you think after 148 episodes of doing this, I, I'd, I'd have a clue. I just don't. I, um, I, yeah, <laughs> don't expect it. Uh, my name is Matthew Keel. I'm at Infinite Underscore Rewind. Everywhere you might want to find me. Um, and uh, we talk about video games here. Also, we tend to give them away. That's true. Um, so we're giving away Mario Maker 2 that releases in two weeks. Uh, well, two weeks from today. It is, what day is it? June something. June 28th um, is when it comes out. It comes out, it comes out the 28th, yes. Um, and we will be announcing the winner for Mario Maker 2 on June 23rd. How do you enter, you might be asking. Well, you you can you can uh, follow the show everywhere you might want to YouTube, any iTunes service or any podcasting service of choice. I'm like as if iTunes is the only one, and iTunes is going away soon. Yeah, um, so not iTunes. So not, no more <laughs> iTunes. Uh, R I P iTunes. <laughs> um, so you can uh, any podcast service uh, you choose to partake in. Also, we are on Spotify and iHeartRadio. What you need to do is subscribe. Uh, send us a screenshot of your subscription to our email address, which is uh, nerdsgonerogue at gmail.com. Uh, and then tell us how you found us. Um, hopefully, why you like us. If you have some criticisms throw them in there too we try and take that stuff on board we try we tr we do try and be better um and if you uh also if you write us a review that gets you a second entry mm -hmm. um so you have you have two possible ways to enter uh and then we will announce the winner live on june 23rd um, we are missing. We are missing our third wheel. Uh, Moose is uh, on assignment watching the Square Enix conference. Actually, he's not really on assignment. He just said he wanted to watch the E3 conference. And who, who am I? Who are we to say no? You can't. Um, uh, and yeah, so you can find him at Sven. You can also find him hosting our PlayStation focused show called Nerds Gone Platinum. They go live on YouTube at youtube.com slash Platinum every Tuesday night uh, around 9. And then uh, their podcast goes live on Fridays on podcast services. This show is also affiliated with a website called nerdsgonerogue.com. You can yeah. find everything. You can find everything we do there. Uh, <clears throat> you can find this show. You can find the NX show. You can find Nerds Gone Platinum. You can find NGR Radio B-Sides. And any uh, any written content we might do. You also find a, a video of me pressing a fart button 
for a little it's over true. 30 Pinned seconds. to the top. Pinned to the top and, of the page. Um, and, and that's and that's what we do. Um, and we also answer listener questions every episode. You can email us at nerdsgonerogue at gmail.com. Um, yeah. So yeah. E, so as we've mentioned already, E3 is a happening. Um, so it's, it's a up, happening. Up to this point, uh, we have had Google, we have had Microsoft, we have had Bethesda, we have had Ubisoft, and EA and Devolver Digital. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm missing anybody now. Nope, the Square at conference is happening while we're recording. Yeah, so yeah. Well, Square, the, Square has not happened; it's happening. For some reason, okay. Before before we get started, for some reason, mm-hmm. our numbers in the last like three months have spiked a significant amount, which I'm extremely happy for. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to take this moment to explain how we record, even though we kind of explain it through housekeeping and stuff anyway but you know mm-hmm. some people skip through that whatever sure. we we record we record live on monday nights mm-hmm. and then uh since our show isn't really based on timing it around news or anything we'd go live and then the following monday we will have an edited podcast so yeah. if you are a newer listener by the time you hear this on a podcast feed it's a week old mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. That's why we're kind of explaining. Okay, this is this is while we're recording. Square is happening. Nintendo has not happened yet. We understand. We have a lot of Nintendo questions. We have a lot of Nintendo questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we record Mondays and yeah, the Nintendo, direct, ha- direct Nintendo, has, Nintendo hasn't happened yet. So I, I mean, I could give you all sorts of answers. None of them would be correct. Or if the off chance some of them were correct, I mean, bully for me. But. <clears throat> Yeah, we could mm. we we could do that, but mm-hmm. and I, I think I think it, what was it earlier today? Moose was like, "Well, we shouldn't record during E three anyway." I go, "Yeah, we also shouldn't record during like the holiday time either." But we do that. It's true. Um, <clears throat> you know, we we, we recorded. I, think, I mean, that's 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 why we started the show anyway, right? Was to yeah. just have conversations yeah. about games. And we stuff don't do this to worry. follow a cycle. We and do. like we've tried to do the E three cycle before too, right? And it's just, I mean, Matt and I, you know, we kind of just decide what we want to do and what we don't want to do, and we just yeah. look. We're recording. It's Monday night. It's time to record. That's, mm-hmm. that's how it is. I'm yeah. sorry, and I'm I'm not trying to stick it to Moose or anything because no, no, he no, wants no, to watch. No, 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 I'm just I'm just saying like that that there's gone platinum. And NX show are two completely different shows from what you know what Matt, Matt and I set out to make this show, right? And yeah, you know, so and sadly, Nerds Gone Platinum is not really going to have a PlayStation conference to talk about, although they did have that state of play a couple weeks ago. And then yeah. you know, they'll t- probably talk about Ubisoft and Bethesda, and mm-hmm. I'm sure Moose will talk about Devolver for an hour, yeah. Uh, and and well, I mean, I think that. I think that they'll, the, they they will look at Devolver and go, "What the hell is happening?" Um, like they do every year. Mm-hmm. This is this is what we do on Nerds Gone Road. We do Nerds Gone Platinum predictions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I predict Jason will <laughs> s- take a snooze fest while Moose talks about Nerds Gone and, or talks about Devolver Digital. And like, and I, I know that they're probably going to have their appropriate shade to throw. Microsoft's way, they're gonna be like, "Oh, look at all these games I'm gonna play on PS4, except for Halo." Um, but I, I also think that, like, there's there while there is some validity to that statement, I will also say that, like, we can also look at this as like it's not to me at least it's not been a super overwhelming E3. It's no, not, it's been very it's quiet just like, and like, very uh, like it's been pretty uneventful. So yeah, they've shown, right? They've they've we've known about. Yeah, so. like I mean, you know, in, in a week or well, between last show and this show, a lot of the From Software stuff came out. Tales of Arise came out, and Nino Kuni Two came out in the form of leaks. Um, 
<clears throat> and, the, and whatever leaks happen and it's and it's not because and it's not because some dude at one of these companies just decided hey i'm gonna say all this and be real popular with some journalists because like i will be an inside source now i actually think that there's a, a lot of moving parts and one person was told to do a job they did that job and and you know, websites got updated before they were supposed to. Yep. And <clears throat> the new th- the new thing now is Nintendo is sending cease and desist orders out to, to leakers. Yeah. <laughs> because like they're, yeah, they're doing they're threatening legal action, which whatever. Yeah. Um <laughs> whatever. I mean th- that's a there's a conversation we could have there's a conversation to be had around that that is um probably oh I, I, I'll say over my head, not necessarily because um, I don't think I could have the conversation, but because I don't know enough about the industry. <clears throat> I mean, I know Hollywood has like trade papers and there are articles that are literally released that say, hey, this is what we're doing for the next five years. Um, I know that like, what is it? Isn't there like a comic con or something or some sort of event coming up where Marvel will basically unveil everything for the next three years of their cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to be like, Oh, they're spoiling it. No, they're just telling you what you have to look forward to. And I also understand like the other side of it, you want to, you want to convey this message your way. You want to control it. Fine. Um, I mean, maybe th- th- I think the easy way to control it is maybe you don't need to have websites update you know, at a certain time. Like say, hey, we'll be updating our website in the next couple of days rather than trying to do it now or rather than trying to get Walmart on side now. That also puts you in a financial position of being behind the eight ball to it mm-hmm. too. So like there's, there's pluses and minuses on all sides uh, of this. Um, I think waypoint was talking about like, are, are these, are these leaks spoilers? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. Uh, if they're leaking an announcement for a game, there's nothing spoilery about it. Sure, you want to be there, you want to have the conversations, but if you see a story uh, on Kotaku Reset Era or or any of the any of the bigger sites like IGN, GameSpot, uh, you have the option not to click on it. Mm-hmm. And 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 here's the best part: like all this, st- all all these leaks that came out before, they didn't tell you anything. Like, yeah, from Software's new thing with George R. R. Martin, uh, Elden Ring leaked a couple days ago. What do we know now after Microsoft has happened? From Software is doing a game with George R. R. Martin called Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. Like. I got nothing from the, I got nothing from that trailer, and I'm not going to knock From Software for it because here's the thing: I think most From Software players understand that <clears throat> a trailer doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, like Bloodborne's trailer told us nothing about how good that game was going to be because if you don't. I mean, even even the Sekiro like stuff like those announcements they didn't they they didn't tell me that that was none nothing about that showed me that it was going to be my favorite game this year (laughs) nothing yeah i mean i knew did i know i was going to play it yes did i know i was going to buy it yes did i know i was interested yes because from software makes games that i like to play uh am i interested in Elden ring yes am i going to play Elden ring yes do i need to see any more it nah because it's not nothing's gonna nothing's gonna matter until I get my hands on the controller. Yeah, um, I'm excited. Like when I found out there was a new Tales game, like more than likely I will not play it. But that is still my favorite JRPG series. That game looks awesome. Like and, it looks like the art style they chose to go is look. It's more like a. It's almost like the the art style that Dragon Quest Eleven went with, but with tales mixed in like old tales mixed in it looks awesome 
Like they, they have that. They have like the for those who haven't watched the trailer, they they have the. Uh, I'm assuming the female protagonist of the game, mm-hmm. walk, like slowly walking down this the stairs of this. Um, castle or monument or something and like after every step they show like the world or the the creatures or you know the environments and stuff it just it that was a really cool trailer and it made me excited for that game even though like you said i'm probably not gonna play it (laughs) to be honest with you but it looks cool right i mean i i have sort of plans as to how i'm going to i'm I'm sort of setting up like a roadmap for myself next year of like games i want to play because i want to try and buy a lot less Mm -hmm. um And uh, like I, 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 there are a lot of really, really long games that I'm looking to play next year. Mm-hmm. And uh, there might be a Tales game or two on that list, but I, I don't know if Ari- is it Arise or Arise? I forget. I I don't know. They didn't really say. It just said it's A R I S E. Yeah. So, I'm, so I'll, I'll just say Arise because. I'm you know, sure it's not Arise. Have you yeah. read a Tales title lately? I'm sure it's not well, Arise. Well, like, well, I'm guessing if it's Japan, it's probably like Rise from, like, because uh, because I have the phonetic reference to Persona Four. Like, there is a character named Rise that's spelt Rise. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's a Rise. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so I mean, we're we're here. Let's just talk. Let's just talk Microsoft for a little bit. Okay. Um, you just want to jump right in, huh? Yeah, I mean, we'll do game time later. It's fine. Okay. Um, well, do you want to start with Microsoft or you want to talk about Stadia? Well, let's talk. Let's talk Microsoft because we're already talking about things sort of that were already there. Okay. We can. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll do this in whatever order. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Did Stadia really tell us much? <laughs> um, but- I mean. I- I I was really interested in the tech for Stadia, but I also know that like whatever Google is doing, Xbox and Microsoft are doing the same thing with Xbox, which was confirmed yesterday. Yeah. So I mean, like, back to look, save pin in that. We'll, yep. we'll stick with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, now I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think. Like I, because I, because I started watching this with the intent to take notes, but I actually just, I, I actually was just kind of like not interested through most of it. So I'm kind of going through, going from memory. Yeah. Uh, well, they start. They really first off, they started with Outer Worlds, which is cool. Like that's yeah. cool. That's a cool game to start to to show. Like I'm really excited for that game. Why didn't you start with something we don't know about or something that we know very little about? Like, yep. why didn't they start with Gears or Halo? Like, or what would have been cool since they start every conference with Forza? Why didn't they start with the Lego Forza stuff? Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, that well, that's been a that's been a trend this year. A lot of people just start out of left field. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, well, I mean, we can. I'll just mention it, like. Ubisoft did not start with that with just dance and I was angry about it. Yeah, I, was, I, I, was, I was real sad. I wanted my hallucinogenic beginning to a Ubisoft conference. I know. I, didn't get it. I, I got the Assassin's Creed Symphony. Not going to knock the music, but like, cause I don't play those games. I can't really praise it or knock it, but no, it's fine. I like, look, I just, do, I do play those games and I'm like, and I started the conference early or late. I mean, you know, because like I was at work and I was trying to watch it in between, you know, whatever. And I started late, and I'm like, "What is this garbage?" I don't like, want, is, I don't, it, is it over? I was like, <laughs> are, "I was like, are they are they announcing the new Assassin's Creed game, or are they just playing some music?" And I scrolled through, and I was like, "Oh, it's literally just the music." <laughs> They're announcing a tour, a touring symphony of Assassin's Creed music. Anyway, back to Microsoft. They started with. Outer Worlds. Um, I, I mean, I like the idea of starting with Outer Worlds because it puts a developer like Obsidian, you know, up front. Mm-hmm. Um, it sh- it, it's kind of like a statement of we think this is it. We 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 believe in this. Mm-hmm. Game Pass, uh, by the way, day one. Yeah, uh, which and, mm, I can't believe I can't believe Two K let them do that. By the way, even though like Obsidian's owned by Microsoft. 2K is funding the project because the, of the contracts before they were bought. Mm-hmm. So we're private division. I'm st- I'm I'm thinking like maybe Microsoft is handing 2K extra money for it. I'm I guarantee you they are. 
Uh, so, I mean, that's cool though. Like, I can't believe all these games are coming to Game Pass. First yeah. of all, you know, I, I, I'm still, I'm still floored by how great of a value Game Pass is. And mm-hmm. now, like, you know, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but for fifteen dollars a month, you get Xbox Live Game Pass on Xbox and PC for fifteen dollars a month. Yeah, that's how like, how. Like th- how are that, they making any money? Like, yeah, that sort of, I mean, the, the, since it's all new stuff, like that sort of, that's a, that's a reason to look Xbox way mm-hmm. that, that genuinely is. And then when you pair that with like the X cloud stuff, they talked to later and that every single Xbox one and Xbox Scarlet is going to be your own personal server for X cloud. Mm-hmm. Along with their their Azure data centers, like yeah. Microsoft is is swinging hard. I mean, yes, but also like th- th- that puts them that puts them having the Google problem as well. Like it needs to work. Yeah, well, that. But they also, unlike Google, can are giving you choice of you can play on PC. You can play on Xbox. You can download the games. You the next Xbox confirmed to have a disc drive, so you can buy physical copies, mm-hmm. or you can stream it. Like they can get out of the Google stuff. Like they have a less problem than Google does because you can download the games or purchase the game physically. Or there's a there's a there's a, there's more of a concept of ownership. Yeah. yeah. Whereas on Google, like they're not addressing that at all. Yeah, and also unlike. Uh, uh, Google, you know, I know some people will disagree with me, but Xbox has first party games and Google does not. True. You know, I mean, they, it, they have one exclusive and it's, it's baby's first survival horror and guilt. It's not exclusive though. It's not, coming. The, yeah. It's it, like time exclusive. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, but, but in, in CN, I, I think that this is, I think this creates an interesting fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like, is it is it going to be Google versus Xbox, or is it going to be Google versus Microsoft? If I it's think. if it now, hear me out. If it's Google versus Xbox, there's only one winner. Mm-hmm. If Mike, if Microsoft as a corporation is gonna is gonna fight this fight. Mm-hmm. This could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I read a I read a really interesting article on Eurogamer, I think. Okay. It was uh uh it was I forget what the title was. It was like uh Microsoft or Microsoft is preparing for a fight but not against PlayStation. And it was all about their the fight for the cloud-based future against Google and it was super interesting. Well, uh, yeah. Sony can't do Sony cannot well, that's, I mean, that's why Sony, I think, you know, the that's memorandum what, that, of understanding. Yeah, that's that's why we got the handshake picture. Like, <laughs> somebody's like, well, I think we're just going to have to pick a side here. <laughs> and, I mean, the enemy we know, right? Right. <laughs> the, <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> well, yeah, but, like, te- I mean, technically, you know, Google is the enemy of their enemy. But they just, they're just like, you know what? The devil you know. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why that's happening. I'm, and uh, who knows? Like, I I, I will uh, I I will say this. Like, I wanted I wanted Microsoft to swing a bit harder than they did. Oh, I so th- did I. I think that I think I think they they made. I, I'm not going to say they they did they did like super anything super incorrect because I don't think they did. Um, I think that they just, I think they could have, they, they had a, they had a, they had a chance to like say, they could have hit a home run and they hit a double. Yeah. Or they, or, or they could have stretched that double into a triple, but they stayed. Yeah. Um, they, they, uh, they didn't, they didn't address next generation. I mean, they, they did though. Yeah. Project Scarlet it's coming. I mean, come I mean, on. They, Dr. They, Dre says that about an album for 10 years and the hip hop community goes crazy for 10 years. I mean, they they did the same thing that they did with uh, Xbox One X, though. Pretty much is like we're going to talk about it more next year. But here's the real basics, and you know, <laughs> please be excited. <laughs> right. I mean, 
thank you. Taking oh really? Phil Spencer's taking a cue from the Square Enix playbook, really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, nice, nicely job. Um, I, 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 I do want, I do want to say, uh, they bought Double Fine. Yeah, they did. They well, bought Double Fine. I think Double Fine needed that though, because oh, I agree. I agree. because Psychonauts and their other project were being published by Starbreeze, and Starbreeze ain't doing well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and um, I think Double Fine was in trouble, and Microsoft came in and saved them, which I think is good because, you know, Double Fine is it. You know, they don't necessarily make the best games, but they make cool, quirky games, and the industry needs a company like er, Double Fine, and they need Tim Schafer. Yes. You know, so uh, yes. I that was so funny though. <laughs> when they, did you Tim, Tim Schafer? I'm I'm a team player. I promise I'll be good. If you if you need if you need if what do you need? You need Halo assets. I can make them. If you you want me to make some Forza, I want I want a Tim Schafer Halo game. <laughs> That would be so good. Yeah, it'd be pretty funny. Like if it's anything like how, like imagine him doing like a point and click adventure in the Halo universe. Oh, jeez. Uh, a la what was that one they did? Um, Broken Age. Yeah. Uh, like, cause there's some funny shit in Broken Age. I, I genuinely think so. I mean, I think some of the the mechanics in that game are, are a little, little weird. Um, but like. Yeah, I would totally like. I would totally take Tim Schafer doing Microsoft IP stuff. That would be good. Yeah, I want a Tim Schafer Conquer game or Banjo game or something along those lines. Like if I mean if I mean if Phil can put Tim Schafer and say, "Hey, Double Fine's cool, but I want you to write a Banjo game," like do that uh like i i i like double fine i genuinely do there there's there's a lot of like like you said the industry needs a company like double fine because they do weird shit and and weird shit is always i mean is always better like i think we need a double fine very much in the same way we need a hideo kojima Mm -hmm. or or a suda 51 or Mm -hmm. or a shinji mikami um Or or a Hidetaka Miyazaki, but like I don't think Double Fine could do a 3D platform very well. I mean, I mean they've done Psychonauts. I'm not saying I'm not. I mean, I'm not saying Psychonauts is bad. No, I I I know. I'm just saying like that's but what like, people love Psychonauts, and like I mean, I'm I'm kind of there with you. Like. I, I didn't mean to s- sound like oh Psychonauts is the best platform ever. I'm just saying they, they've, their strengths are in areas like Broken Age and mm-hmm. and you know it's not. I mean Psychonauts is a is a f- quirky cool platformer, but it's mm-hmm. not. Th- I wouldn't say that platforming is their strength, but also I really like Psychonauts. So yeah, Psycho- I mean yeah, I can't, <laughs> I mean Psychonauts two is coming everywhere and all all the better for it. But uh, and like and I will play that game. I I, I will I would I mean I I will play it. I will probably love it, and that'll be fine. But very much in the way that like, um, uh, how do I want to say this? <clears throat> very much in the way that like, like think about again and and go with me on this one think about a game like super meat boy um that game is equal parts writing and equal parts mechanics i feel like double fine can do writing and presentation here and mechanics here and if they could if they could be put in charge of like writing a banjo game and rare did all the mechanics around it fine I'm 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 good with that, or you know, or even like the ukulele team, like mm-hmm. th- those are all people that worked at Rare anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but know. I mean, ukulele was cool, but it wasn't. It's not like the most fantastic game. Although I do have to say, they're making a 2D platforming ukulele game that looks awesome. Okay, it looks like it looks like Donkey Kong Country Returns is what. It all looks right, like. all uh, right, with, with like a top down. Uh, almost Mario 3D world 
uh, okay. map system. All right. And with 2D gameplay like Donkey Kong Country Returns, it looks awesome. Okay. Uh, ukulele was a cool, like, it was a cool first try mm-hmm. for that studio, right? And and I'm glad it got funded and everything. And Team 17 is now their publisher, so they're funded, which makes gives me, you know, I, I have high hopes for this second ukulele game. And I would actually like to see, like, I would like to see them Microsoft t- give them Conquer because the humor in Ukulele is very Conquer. Right. Right. The, the quest giver in that game is is a snake and his name is Trouser. <clears throat> okay. Yep. I mean like it's but he's a trouser snake, yeah. Yeah. And he has it doesn't he have shorts on? Yeah. And the tail goes through both legs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean video games. Yeah. Um so what else happened at Microsoft? Uh well Ninja Theory revealed Bleeding Edge, which, which I'm, is I'm Borderlands cons- and Overwatch? Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Like um, I feel I feel like this is the game that Ed would confuse. Like when he was talking about how Overwatch was Borderlands. Yeah. I think this is the game he was talking about. Yes. Yeah, we do. We have that. We had that exact same conversation. <laughs> we have we have the Ed Borderlands game yeah. here. It's I'm just, I'm really Ninja cons- Theory. If you're watching this show, you can come on. Like yeah. we'll talk to you. <laughs> this is a game that I'm really glad is getting Game Pass support because I don't know if it would sell well in a post Overwatch world. I don't think I. He- I am also really happy that they have three or four projects in the work for Microsoft already yes. <laughs> because like, you know, I, I know that this like Hellblade was a passion project for them and Microsoft needs something from them, mm-hmm. you know, but to go from like DMC and Hellblade and enslaved and heavenly sword to this is a little it for me personally as a Ninja Theory fan is a little concerning. It's jarring. Um, I mean, I'm I am all for uh, a, a developer taking a left turn, um, especially stepping outside like a, a, a comfort zone. And but but this, I mean, this was kind of like, hey, what are you playing at? Because mm-hmm. there's like there's like taking the left turn into there's there's taking a left turn that kind of makes sense, mm-hmm. like um, like and, and this just wasn't it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, but also like it is Ninja Theory, so there's going to be something sound about it. I think the combat will be super quality. I think mm-hmm. the characters will be charming enough. I don't know how mu- how I don't know if this game will have the legs it needs to survive, except for the simple fact <sighs> that it's coming to PC, Steam, my, the, I mean Microsoft's. PC Game Pass or whatever, Steam and Xbox all at the same time, and it's crossplay. That's the only thing that will right. give. Like, it's one of those games that will have an audience because it's so many places. Uh, yeah. I just don't. I don't want it to have like a like a drawn to death type fate. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, not this, that this not that like- drawn to death was like great or anything, but it didn't survive because it didn't have the audience. Yeah. So. Uh, but th- this just seems like they are really, s- they're, they're like, hey, we want esports money. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was there was a lot of that here, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just not sure about it. Yeah. Um, I thought it honestly I th- when they started sh- like showing it, like if I if they didn't say anything beforehand, I would have thought it was like Borderlands DLC. Yeah. So. Speaking of which. Yeah. Speaking of Borderlands <laughs> DLC that's available now. Yeah. Uh, for Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2. Seven years later, getting DLC. It's, it's free, though. And also, Borderlands Handsome Collection is on Game Pass now with the DLC. So mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. Uh, man, dude, every time I look at the game list on Game Pass, I'm like, that game's on Game Pass already? Like, man, game. If you're listening to the show and you have an Xbox and you don't have Game Pass, what is wrong with you? That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, well, I I wouldn't necessarily because I think a lot of people see subscription service and they're like, and that's fair. 
but like genuinely take a look at this one because yeah. like I'll be I, I I will be honest over the past couple of months and I've been pretty silent about this. Um, I've looked at Game Pass and I'm like, I kind of feel like I'm missing out, like just not not being able to play these games where where I could be. Um, I mean, and there's a lot of games on there that I I have played that I wouldn't have purchased because they're on Game Pass, right? Like mm-hmm. Sea, of, sea of Thieves, State of Decay, Crackdown 3. Those are all games I would have never played, and I played them because they're on Game Pass. Did I stick with them? No, no. but I'm glad I got to try them. But like, you know? that, is the, that is the rent-a-video game from Blockbuster model now. Yeah. Like, that's what that is. Yeah. As far and- as I'm concerned. And they're getting they're getting great games like six months down after release too. Like the entire Tomb Raider trilogy is on there now. Uh, Prey is on there. Doom is on there. Wolfenstein one and two are both on there. Uh, you know, there's there's fantastic. There's all kinds of fantastic games. The ba- uh, Elder Scrolls Online is on there with a couple of expansions now. Yeah. Uh, Fallout Four, uh, Fallout Three there's a lot on there so i know i'm just naming bethesda games because i don't have the full list in front of me but i know bethesda is like really in bed with microsoft yeah i could i could pull it up if i knew where my phone was but i don't um do we, do you, do any any other like uh, high, highlights other than tech uh, uh from like, my from microsoft yeah from microsoft uh i mean besides the the gears 5 trailer I'm super stoked for Gears 5 because I've, I watched some Game Informer footage afterwards and the new escape mode, the three player co-op, it's it's they're describing it as left for gears. It's a it's a three player squad based class based uh, uh, run based uh, game with created levels like you can build your own levels and share them with friends Uh and you have to escape the level before like the whole point is you go into this hive a a locust hive and you have to plant a bomb to destroy it uh and it releases poison throughout the the uh the hive and you have to escape the hive before the bomb goes off and it's really interesting it looks awesome uh so i mean it's i can't wait for gears 5 and phillips already said he's going to co-op it with me which I would not say no to that because it's crossplay with the PC versions. Uh, and also Xbox one X version is going to run at 60 frames a second uh, through the campaign and the uh, uh, multiplayer. So really exciting. And then halo infinite looked fantastic. Uh, I, I was getting some real, real halo two vibes from that, even from the master chief's design. Mm-hmm. The armor set is straight up the armor design from uh, the Halo 2 remake straight yeah. up. And <sighs> I was like, man, this this game is going to be awesome. Uh, graphically looks I know they're in like a polished stage now with that game. Graphically, and I know they're working with a new engine and everything, but it the character models, at least like the human character models look like a downgrade from Halo 5 to me. Uh, but with that said, I know it's going to be more of a non-linear open halo, uh, similar to ODST and kind of have a, uh, almost like a games as a service model where they're going to add campaign. They're going to add multiplayer stuff, uh, throughout the lifespan of halo infinite. So, Mm -hmm. uh, I, that has me really excited being a huge destiny fan. So, uh, halo infinite looked great. And then, uh, the, the game that I was not really excited for until the reveal and it just the excitement around it got me excited for the game was Cyberpunk. Uh, yeah. The Keanu Reeves reveal was. Yeah. It was pretty magical. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I mean, I, I thought I, I, I think that is like. There, there are leaks that happen, but then there are leaks you are glad that didn't happen, mm-hmm. and that is one of those. I can't believe that that did not leak. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just love the fact that, like, I love the fact that he was so, he was, he, he walks out on stage, and he is immediately 
he feels at home, but so out of place. I know. It felt like it felt like he was in Bill and Ted three mode. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it yeah. felt like. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Al, was Alex Silver or, yeah. Al, or Al, Alex, Alex, Alex Winter? Or Alex, Alex Winter. Winter. Okay, I'm waiting for Alex Winter to like be a side character in Cyberpunk now. Um, but I thought that was like, look, people are. I think that is one of the most anticipated games. Um. It's they gave the release date for that too, didn't they? Yep, April yeah, four sixteen twenty. Which, if you didn't figure that one out, twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> God, uh, twenty twenty, dude. What yeah, is happening? Right. Uh, but like, that is one of the. I mean, the fact that they're still like just pulling back the onion on that game and showing us like surprises, really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, yeah i oh my gosh dude when like he oh man no and he like bent down and took the sunglasses on and everybody was like freaking out that it was keanu reese I was yeah. like, what is happening yeah <laughs> what, just, a, what is this world we live in yeah i was i was i was watching uh a giant bomb talk over and every one of them was like what <laughs> what <laughs> mm-hmm. like all of them were just shocked it seemed like uh, and and yeah, that was a very that was a very very cool thing to see at E three, and like it wasn't it wasn't handled poorly either because he he like just he goes you want to know the release date? <laughs> Survey says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, man, so yeah, so yeah, John Wick is in Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was pretty pretty big. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I mean, the only other thing that was really cool, except I don't really care for racing games, was the Lego Horizon yeah, stuff. Lego Forza, that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, sure. That. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, they I did. Mean, they did I mean, that. They did the Hot Wheels thing for three, and that was really cool. Yeah. And now they're doing Lego, which is equally as cool. I just. There's too many other games to play. I'm sorry, and racing is not the genre I play, except Mario Kart. So, <laughs> yeah, if, it's, if it's not a kart racer or Burnout Paradise, I'm kind of <sighs> yeah. yeah. Um, and they did toy cars and Burnout Paradise. So cool. <clears throat> um, so now we can we can I, I guess yeah. There's, I don't. I, if there's anything else for Microsoft, uh, I, I don't remember. I mean, I mean ta- uh, the other text- than the, the tech stuff, like, I mean, we can have a different discussion on that on a different episode or whatever, but that, yeah. that, that is what was most exciting to me was hearing their side of the tech stuff that Google presented last week. And it was like, as someone who plays a lot of Xbox, mm-hmm. you know, uh, being able to take Halo or Gears or Destiny and play it on my phone wherever I go is extremely exciting and tying that together with game pass and making every single Xbox one and Xbox Scarlet, a personal server. If you own it or using their data centers is equally as exciting. And that's coming a lot earlier than I expected. It's coming in October uh, to every single Xbox and IO and iOS and Android device. Yeah. It's I, it's blowing my mind that I can sit here on my phone and play an Xbox game and you can link any Bluetooth controller to it, uh, including a switch controller apparently and a dual or dual shock four. And it will just recognize the controller. Uh, also they confirmed today that all Scarlet or the Xbox Scarlet is backwards compatible with all four generations of Xbox. And all of your accessories will ca- will move forward with you. I feel like they said that on the show floor. Yeah, well, they someone, it wasn't it wasn't during it wasn't that. it wasn't during the conference. It was during an interview with Phil Spencer. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel but, like I heard, I heard someone actually say those words, and I don't remember where. Yeah, F- Phil said it in an interview <laughs> somewhere. It wasn't during the conference, but uh, I know I know you know. The Phillips was really mad when they said 8K, 120 frames a second, <laughs> po- like probably, possibly, which to me tells me 
normal people games they're aiming for 4k 60 yeah on like, everything yeah i, I think mean, i think that when they say that they have to they have to say the biggest number they can achieve also also the 8k output is for like a certain hdmi uh you know hdmi 2.1 i think is what they're on mm -hmm. is all hdmi 2.1 is able to output 8k even if the dev even if like the software or the video you're running isn't in 8k mm -hmm. it's able to output it's the hdmi that's connected to it it's not exactly the the inside that can produce it right yeah. so if they're using hdmi 2.1 it's the same thing with the playstation 5 right it's like the hd they're using hdmi 2.1 so technically so it is outputable yeah at 8k but that doesn't mean what you're producing is 8k yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean <clears throat> It's a nice bullet point, but highly unlikely at this point. Yeah, right? like and, and I mean, the cheapest 4K TV I found was or 8K TV I found was uh, forty five hundred dollars, and that was the fifty five inch Samsung QLED. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, uh, and, and and I don't think there's anything out there that broadcasts in 8K. So what are you doing? Uh, right. But yeah, I mean, and all all the, all of the all all the technical stuff like. I like, I mean, as I said before, I like that they sort of put, they sort of put more of a package around it rather than just saying, this is what we're doing, abstract, 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 uh, and everything works from our data center, mm -hmm. uh, like what we'll do in, in a little bit with, with Google. Um, but I, I think that them saying, hey, you can buy a game and play a game. You don't have to stream it. Um, mm -hmm. the, the concept of ownership is still, it's still a thing. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's, I think it's going to be a thing for a while. I don't really see what take, what makes that not a thing anymore. Yeah. Uh, and them saying, Hey, you can still own your stuff. Probably, probably the right move. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. Uh, before we go to Google, let's briefly talk about EA because I'll be real with you. I watched the Star Wars thing and I watched Apex Legends. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, not, that's that's all I watched too. <laughs> I did not watch anything else, uh, frankly, because I wanted to sleep. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I watched the Star Wars stuff is because it's Respawn and I'm interested in their projects, and I figured yeah. we were going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so. like and 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 like Apex Legends. That stuff was cool. Um, I liked that they are tr they're finding a way to separate the the elite from the casuals. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 that's kind of heartening for a player like me who doesn't play often. Um, and when he does play, it's not well. So <clears throat> I like to uh, tell my teammates that they need a bigger backpack because I'm a large person. They need to yes, carry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. Uh, I, I hope. You, I hope you brought your 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 weight belt today because uh, you are carrying me. Um, I like the new character. Uh, I like the little backstory they got for the new character. Yeah. Um, yeah. There. That, that, I. I. I think that. I. I still think that that is. Um. Whether or not it's the best battle royale game, I think it's my favorite. Uh partially because it's one of the two that I've won and uh partially because I think it I think it's just it's still fun. Even yeah. if I jump in and play like even if I jump in and just, just going to play a match, die in 5 10 minutes, whatever. Like it yeah. is it is still fun to run around that world. Yeah, I played a little bit this <laughs> this weekend and it's just it's still it feels really good cuz like uh not to like say what I've been playing, but last weekend Jesse and I played some Blackout Mm -hmm. And I moved over to Apex, and I just I think Apex is just uh, for me at least is just way better to get into than than Blackout because like I'm not great I'm not great at shooting people right mm -hmm. but if I can you know use a uh, a lifeline to heal people or provide a, a you know a, a, a airdrop or whatever or you know if I could use a what's uh, what's the guy that you can use the big dome and to, uh, to shield people Gibraltar, from stuff. Gibraltar. yeah Gibraltar to use the dome in a final match situation like a final showdown situation uh you know that's 
that's what I like to do. You know, mm-hmm. even, even in overwatch, like I, I love to use Lucio or, or mercy because I like to heal people or buff people because that's, that's the, that's my strength, right? I, mm-hmm. I'm not great at shooting people. Yeah. Uh, although in those games, it's a little bit easier to shoot people in overwatch than it is, uh, apex, but my point yeah. stands. So, mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I like the new hero. Watson is, is cool. Yeah. And, and I think that, I, I think that while the battle pass stuff might not be for me, yeah. Um, because I, I, I like to play, I like to play multiple things. Um, mm-hmm. and I usually don't stay at one thing for too, too long. Um, but, uh, I think the battle, I think, th- I think they are going to get the battle pass. Right. And I think what they sort of talked about here is them moving that way. Um, cause remember like, Battle passes are still relatively new, and people, companies have, they have, they have to be. Eventually, you you have to be new at them at some point. And I think their people took a love to try and take a crap on them for their season one battle pass, but you know it's the first one. You can't you can you, you for your first step up to the plate isn't a home run all the time. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think they're I think they're doing good things, and I liked. I liked everything they showed for for Apex Legends and good on them. Uh, let's get to Star Wars. I feel like this game um, is very blah. Yeah, it looked. It just looks. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know. If it's just because I haven't seen enough of it or what, but it just looks. It looks simple. It mm-hmm. looks very linear and it looks like a Star Wars game that may have come out early in like the PS3 era era. Well, I, I don't mean I, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm I just, not I'm not saying in terms of looks, I'm saying in terms of like level design and combat and you know what I mean? Just like the simplicity of it. I've also heard what they showed at the on stage um is is not what they're showing behind the scenes. Yeah, like behind the scenes, uh, there's a lot more. I, I guess a lot of people are saying that there, there's a lot, there's a lot more Metroid in the game. Yeah, Vince Pella said in an interview with Game Informer that it's heavily inspired by Metroid Prime mm-hmm. and Dark Souls Three, which is, I mean, I think that I think they took some inspiration from Sekiro. That's all the combat you saw was like I'm, I'm like I'm pretty sure I fought those exact fights in Sekiro. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> and that that's pretty much the combat loop, which is why I think from software should make a star Wars game. But, uh, I mean, and then the minute you see everyone grapple off, I'm like, wow, did, did, this is everything from Sekiro. Now, am I going to sit here and proclaim that Vin Sampella and respawn basically lifted that from Sekiro? No. Yeah, because I mean, game, if video game if, development takes a long time, and it takes a long time to get to a point where you can announce something that's a year out. I mean, the combat director did work on God of War two and three, so I have faith that he knows combat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like uh, I, I, I look, I, this game did not put its best foot forward. No. Um, but because it is respawn, um, I, I will, I will say. I will, I will look at it and probably buy it because I like their games. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I am a Respawn fan, and uh-huh. I like I like cool action games. And I, <laughs> spoilers, I like Metroid Prime. So yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, I'd be surprised if anyone didn't see that one coming. Um, no, but I I think that I I like the choices they made. And I like the fact that when when Greg Miller said, "Hey, can you be a bad? Can you be a Sith or a Jedi?" They're like, "No." And he's like, "Why?" Because <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was pretty ingenious. And I also think that like you know this is a, this is a, this is part of this is canon, mm-hmm. so uh, they have to adhere to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which it, I, I think it looks cool. The, I, I like the fact that they have wall running in a game again. I like um, I, I like the actor they have playing uh, 
Cal, the mm-hmm. main character. Like he's he was in uh, Shameless and Gotham and uh, something else I watched recently too. And like he's a really I think he's a really strong actor. And I know people were like, why did you get a generic white guy to play the main character? But like, he's a really good actor. I, th- I think he plays his roles well. And, uh, you know, in Gotham spoilers, he plays the Joker and he's r- really good. So, right. uh, you know, if you're one of those people that are questioning it, just give him a chance. He's he's a good. Well, actor. So, well, also, like, is, is the character a generic white guy? I mean, I mean, I don't know anything about the character as uh, lore wise. What? So in in Star Wars, yeah, I I mean, it's I don't know. This is his first appearance in anything. So, so. I mean, I, I I think that that was probably decided by the people the the lore masters at Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So the rumor is is like he's the the youngling who survived the in Episode Three. When Anakin yeah, I think murdered like a, all of them, it's like a post execute yeah. order sixty six or something like that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, like despite this game's not so great showing, like I'll play it probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll definitely. I think this is a game that like I'm not one hundred percent sold on, so I'm not afraid to see more of. Uh, <clears throat> and and yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's move on. Uh, we 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 could talk about Google briefly. Uh, I want to say that I like the fact that they had Larian as a, as a part of their press conference. Um, I don't think this is. I mean, most of what they said was. Well, I don't think they have any tried. They don't, they don't have any like complete exclusives. Mm-hmm. Like they have Baby's First Survival Horror Game in yeah. Guild guilt yeah it looks like it looks like i don't know if you played rhyme no yeah i think it is that team i think it is yeah it is it is like it's it looks like rhyme with the lights turned off yeah it's like it's it's i i I mean in war it looks like a double fine survival horror game yeah um and would i play that sure uh because i i think that like a survival survival horror game in that package is more appealing to me yeah. Um, uh, again, I I like the idea of Stadia. I hope it works. Um, also, like there's still there's still a lot they have to sort of tell us. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of questions. <clears throat> um, but back back to Larian. I really love the story of this developer, and the there- more. That's the developer that's doing Baldur's Gate three, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're doing. They did Divinity Original Sin yeah. and two, and but like the more the more I learn about them, the more I'm just like, you know what? I haven't played one of their games yet, and I really fucking should. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've bought Divinity one and two on PS4. I just haven't had a chance to play them, and they're on my roadmap for next year. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to I. I I want to just be a cheerleader for these guys because based on what I know about Divinity 1 and 2 and what I know about Baldur's Gate um, in the ages it's been since I touched that series, Mm -hmm. uh, these are the right people. Like Mm -hmm. this is, this is, if there's any, like you talk about every so often when someone says, Hey, what, what, what is your dream developer IP thing? Like there's nothing more appropriate than Larian doing Baldur's Gate. Yeah. There's there's love, nothing more appropriate. <laughs> I love the story too is like he when they put the team together, he he's like, I want to do Baldur's Gate three, and they're like, nah. Nah. And so he's like, okay, well, we'll do this. And then they they called him back after the success of Divinity. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, Hey, you still want to do Baldur's Gate three? Yeah, I still want to do Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and and but I mean, and that, that's a cool thing. Like that's a that's a cool little that's a, I mean, like he said. N- nerds best dream like nerds dream come true i think is what he said or geeks dream come true i don't know uh but that's that's fucking cool um and then ubisoft like good for them just sort of doubling down on new stuff trying to get their games out there mm-hmm. uh a lot of i ubisoft i think 
I think well before we before we go there, I want to touch on the Google stuff one more time. Well, I was just saying because Ubisoft had a bunch oh. of stuff at at the Google. Oh, okay. Stadium. Yeah, they had like that's where that's they had where, the division and, and Ghost Recon. And Ghost Recon Point Break or Break Point. I'm sorry. Please be. Um, please have Point Break DLC in that game. That'd be awesome. So we, uh, maybe maybe Keanu Reeves will show up in that game too. And just yeah, jump out of an airplane. Go. There we go. <laughs> we call it Point Break Two, and so it's Alex Winter as the villain. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I, I thought that them getting involved—that's, that, I mean, it, it shows that I, I like that they're willing to get their games everywhere. And that's, I mean, true I, to their name, ubiquitous software. Yeah, I think I think Ubisoft getting involved, and then Google must have thrown a lot of money at Bungie. Oh to, man! To be getting the full Destiny experience on Stadia day one for and free I, for and, I mean with the Founders Edition. And here is where I will reveal that I am a founder of Google Stadia. And yeah, now I have, I've. And now I have another copy of Destiny. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is like that's super appealing for someone like me who loves Destiny because mm-hmm. it took Google to implement the cross save feature. Yeah, across all platforms. No grinding for you. No, no, and, no power yeah. leveling. Yeah, I know. Thank God. Jeez. And and yeah, you, fact, just got, you just need a backpack that's my size. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that it's the only place that you can play <clears throat> uh, Destiny on a quote unquote console at sixty frames a second, mm-hmm. which is super appealing to a lot of people. Yeah, uh, who don't want to build a PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and including me, like I was heavily, I'm heavily considering getting S- Stadia for that fact alone. Yeah, you know, and um, that that and the fact that it's cross save and you know, whatever. But uh, also, I was waiting for Microsoft's thing too to see what they were doing. Look, but, I I I took the plunge because it is I mean, new consoles are generally four to five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. This is a hundred and thirty. Mm-hmm. Um. So, why not? If I, I, I would much rather go in at that price and bounce right the hell off it. Mm-hmm. I could feel, I could feel better. I mean, because I, I, I've, I've wasted more than one hundred and thirty dollars uh, on the many, things behind many you. other places, <laughs> um, and. Uh, uh, or or on silly hoodies, um, mm. you, you know. I've I, the, doing this where I, I have I have potential access to more games. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Yeah, and especially since I won't have to build a PC. Yeah. Uh, also, I was telling my wife about the about Stadia, and she's like, "You should get it." I'm like, "Never heard those words come out of her mouth before." better take advantage of this and so i mean but, I, but I mean, you're, you're just like yes it's like the the happiest time you're ever uttering the words yes dear yeah <laughs> uh so i mean i i get paid on on friday so i within the next month or so i will probably also be a founder yes uh be if nothing but to get that sweet sweet blue and orange controller yeah that's the, yeah that's i was like Wait, that's not the controller I want that I saw the one for the time. I'm like, that's the one I want. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, when that comes out, and that'll, that's like a birthday gift to me because it comes out in November. Yeah, same. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. And if it's, if it's hot garbage at launch, I'll keep it around until they start telling me it's fixed. And if it's fixed, see what happens. Yeah, and um, plus, if Google shuts it down in five years, it's like, hey, that's a console life cycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really, and they're still super. Like, they they talked about uh, what was it, the Pro membership? Uh, that's like ten bucks a month. Yeah. And they, I mean, we could we could talk about that, but I feel like mentioning that 
opens up more questions. Yeah, I like I don't know if it's like is it like a game pass like the, the big question is is it like is it like PlayStation Plus where you get free games every month or is it more like Game Pass where you get a library of games that cycle in and out? To quote Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> which which actually which actually brings up a more interesting point. Uh, going back to Ubisoft with the the UPlay Plus Pass that oh, they announced yes. another subscription service. <laughs> but the rumor is that it works cross platform, so you could use it on Stadia and your PlayStation and your Xbox at the same time. Like I know, I I don't know yet. Yeah, no, we but don't know. That's the rumor. We don't is know, that it? I'll, I'll get a whiteboard and just start doing red yarn. At which would be happens. awesome because, like, if I want to sit at home and play Assassin's Creed on, or, you know, Ghost Recon on my Xbox and then go on the road and be like, oh, I feel like playing this game at 60 frames a second instead of 30. Pop on my Stadia, you know? Like, it's interesting. I'm super interested in all this. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, like the 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 big thing is it, like that I was excited for with that announcement was the Destiny cross save stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. my gosh, that's finally. So yeah, I just I mean, is is it me or did it look weird, like the way that they had Phil Harris in in a featureless room in like yeah. Air Jordan? Also, <laughs> also, did you notice that? Both presenters in that thing were wearing blue and orange, and the founder's controller is blue and orange. Yes, yes, I noticed. Okay, <laughs> just wanted to throw that out there in case people weren't sure. Uh, also, Phil Harrison, cool guy, but he looked like he was about twenty years too old for those shoes he was wearing. <laughs> well, I mean, those those shoes are like the first Air Jordans, like they're yeah. just, they're, they're thirty years ago. <laughs> Yeah. And then some. <laughs> yeah. So, but also I, like like I feel like th- that's like that's that's typical corporation stuff. Like the high the high level executives will come to there there's always that one executive that comes to work in like a suit and like red Chuck Taylors because they can. Yeah. Cuz like they've earned it if you will. Yeah. Um <clears throat> which is why I uh, which is why I, uh, I, I, when I become an executive anywhere, I'm going to wear, you know, my Adidas like I do, because I will have earned it. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert: No one will ever have me as an executive <laughs> unless this blows up in some weird way. <laughs> uh, uh, man, and if that does, I'm making up my own title. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> CBSO, Chief Bullshit Officer. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, man. So. Fighting for our future, Reba. Uh, yep, we're going to be rich. <laughs> she gave me the thumbs up. That's all I need. Um, okay, so I think that kind of wraps up Google. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we can talk a little bit about Bethesda. Is it weird that we're the like the only two people we know that are like excited for the stadium? <laughs> um, I don't like every I ha, I mean, to be fair, I haven't really talked to a lot of people about it, but I just feel like it's nice to have well, someone to talk about stadium. With that's yeah. like, well, I mean, I think every we'll see. I think the perception around stadia is. Is odd um, because there there are there are a ton of question marks. Um. And I and I and I know that like when we when when Phillips gets talking and he, he he's he basically speaks in terms of what he knows about technology, uh, and what he knows about technology might dictate his answers, and that's fine. Um, I'm not saying that I know something that he doesn't, but I'm also. I, I guess the easy way to describe it is like I'm up for a good time, and and yes, I I, I chose my words and I that was partially true and partially for a laugh, but like I would much I would much rather try it and it be bad than for me to just poo poo it without knowing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
like and and uh, I think that you know we could talk about we could talk about the tech and and what is widely known about tech and point out to all the reasons why this doesn't work. Uh, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors at Google. I don't know what they're doing with data centers. There might be a data center in my floorboards. I don't know. Uh, but if, if, I mean, if it comes out and it works in ways that people I know, well, I mean, well I'm, I'm using Philips as an example because he's the only person I ever really talked to about tech. Uh, but like if, you know, there are, if, if there are anybody, if, if, if it comes out and it works better than people who know about tech think it will, I just have to say, well, what do you have to say now? Apparently it works. So apparently you were wrong. Apparently there was some shit you didn't know. Um, and, you, and, it, and then it, and if it comes out and it doesn't work, what are they going to do? Ha ha, told you so. Like, no, you, you freaking didn't. Like whatever, like you don't get all high and mighty when you know you're not willing to try. I, I'm I'm interested in this new thing because it's because it is the first console console that is doing something new, mm -hmm. um, and. I, 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 I have chose to spend the money. No one chose to spend it for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I mean, if you, if you haven't come out, uh, if you have, if, if all you've come out of the Google, the two Google things we've had for Stadia, if you've mm -hmm. come out of those and, and been, sitting there going, nope, you're wrong, nope, you're wrong, nope, impossible, impossible, impossible. Uh, I feel like that sort of speaks to a closed-mindedness rather than, uh, hey, they're talking about this like it could work. Because yeah. let, let's be honest, it's it, th this isn't, like, Phil Harrison isn't that guy who believes the earth is flat he's going to go into space to prove it like he's not just this one guy out here going yeah i'm gonna send myself up in a rocket because that's legal um you know the those 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 guys have been doing research and they they, they are people that know vast amounts of things more than i ever will and if they're coming out here and saying, hey, we have confidence that this could be cool and we want to sell it. Mm -hmm. Why not give it a try? Yeah. <clears throat> plus, like, like I said, I'm down for a good time. Plus, like if you don't want to buy the founders pack next year, it's going to cost you ten dollars a month to try. Like if you just sign up, <laughs> plus, I'm sure there's going to be free trials everywhere. Oh, yeah. So like what's the harm plus you can use any controller you want you don't have to use theirs right so unless you're playing through chromecast then you you do have to use theirs for chromecast but yeah. uh you know that's a very interesting proposition for someone who likes to play games and doesn't want to spend 500 dollars on a new box next year Word. so yeah anyways I mean, and, and also like I, I mean, I have another sort of inroad into this. Like, I, I mean, we've seen my phone screen on this show, and it's cracked to shit. Uh, so there's, I mean, I could hold out till November, and if this works really well, what's stopping me from buying a Pixel? Mm -hmm. Right. Um. But uh, so, who can we talk about next? You want to talk a little bit about Bethesda? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Bethesda. So uh, apparently new Doom is just as good as the old Doom, and I can't wait to play new Doom. Right. Dude, okay, so <laughs> during that gameplay demo, all I could think about was I loved 2016 Doom. I didn't think I needed things until... Oh, I man, saw look, this Doom. <laughs> yeah, until, oh, you can dash in the air now. Oh, there's yeah. a hookshot. <laughs> 
there's a hook shot now. Oh, you have a war machine kind of. Someone's short. behind you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sana. <laughs> Matt says hi. <laughs> she just got mad at me because I was too loud. I'm sorry. Okay. Don't divorce me. I love you. Just kidding. She won't. You're not kidding about you love her. I do. I know. You said, don't divorce me. I love you. Just kidding. The the, the order of words there was yeah, very problematic, Corey. <laughs> oh, man. The Square the square Conference is finally showing something I'm interested in. Oh, what? Final Fantasy VIII coming to Switch and other platforms. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Keeps great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, whatever. Um, I'm just saying it's been on for 45 minutes. It's the first thing I've actually batted an eye at. <laughs> I mean, if I have, to, I'm on portables tonight. If I have time, I'll watch it at work. But uh, whatever. I'll watch no, I just, tomorrow. I just have it open in a separate window. I'd no, just... I know that's, that's fine. Um, so Bethesda, Do- Doom's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doom. Doom's awesome. Uh, Wolfenstein's awesome. Yeah. That co-op co-op Wolfenstein will be extra awesome, especially since it was developed by helped by Arcane. So -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, That 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 our other Arcane game looks cool. Deathloop looks cool. Yeah. Well, I remember. I don't remember what what were they. There was something that came out prior to the conference, and they were talking about uh, something and Deathloop. And they're like, oh, Deathloop, that's definitely Shinji Mikami's team. (laughs) But it wasn't. It's Arcane. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which is awesome. Um, But yeah, Deathloop looks really cool. Um, What's the uh, Shinji Mikami's team? I always forget. Uh, Tango. Uh, Tango. That lady from Tango talking about their new game. You remembered the title. I still. You told me before the show. But uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo, like that. I rewound or I scrolled back through this conference just to watch that lady talk. Like I think she. I think she brought the. She she brought perfect a, a perfect amount of energy to talking about a game and being someone that being someone that like knows what they're making and able to be enthusiastic about it at the same time. It wasn't necessarily like EA conferences prior where they get like that super earnest indie developer, like the little developer that could, like this is someone who has worked on games. Um, And uh, I I agree with what Alex Navarro uh, tweeted out today. Like this woman, this woman has, uh, the perfect amount of chaotic good energy, and I have the utmost respect for it. Uh, and and then he, there was like a part of her bio where like apparently she watched Hellraiser a lot as a kid. Oh, good on her. Uh, I think her name is Akumi Nakamura. Uh, and uh, I, if anything, I will support their game because of her so thank you ikumi for 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 selling me this game <laughs> that i cannot tell you anything about because i completely forgot i completely forgot what it is which means i just need to watch her talk about it again yeah yeah any anything oh uh, it was nice to see todd howard come out and say yeah fallout 76 kind of stunk huh yeah uh which I yeah. think I, I think that's the correct move. Yeah, I can't believe they spent that much time on it, though. To be honest with you, no, I really can't either. But I, I mean, between them and between them talking about that game for that long, and EA not talking about Anthem at all, like <laughs> who knows? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, Bethesda is always this interesting company that I like root for, but I don't really. Like I am excited for Doom and Wolfenstein, but that's about it. Like I think Tango always does interesting things, but I don't like mm-hmm. horror games. Yeah. Uh, you know, Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and you know what I'm assuming Starfield mm-hmm. are 
they make cool things that I'm not interested in, you know? So, but Bethesda is just a company that I, I root for. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, uh, but man, Doom and Wolfenstein, I can't wait, man. It's yeah, going to be awesome. Well, Doom, uh, man, dude, just Doom, just, it looks, it just looks way more over the top than the last one, which I didn't know how they could do that. Is that possible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, to, yeah, new doom and that comes out October november this year. november 22nd huh. which is two days before my birthday so three days after mine i think it is exactly chris Har's birthday yeah. i think it is exactly chris Har's birthday uh but yeah i think like doom is doom is a game that i will buy yes this year yeah sure mm-hmm. um <clears throat> Uh, but I don't really have much to s- else to say about Bethesda except you know Arcane's game looks really cool too. Yeah, they talked uh, about they talked about Rage too, and yeah, I'm, I have no I have no interest. Sure. You know, okay. like oh, and then there's and then uh, we have to, I have to mention both for Philip's sake and and my own childhood's sake uh, a new Commander Keen. Oh yeah, like it's it's like the joke that I've made the last couple years. <laughs> well the thing is it's not even a platformer it's like a it's It's like a a, it's a mobile it's a mobile mobile gadget game yeah it's like it's like a i was just like i was just i was kind of like why it looks like a it looks like a like a midday cartoon network cartoon yeah Yeah. (laughs) what it looks like it's like kids just got out of school. I need to distract him with some TV. Put Commander Keen on. Yeah. Um, and, and like, I think that that's I think that that's cool that they looked at that license again. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the way they they're doing it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, it is what it is at this point. Look, but, I mean, how many people outside of us nowadays really know who commander keen is you know i mean like I, besides like the people who are playing pc games in the 90s like yeah like i mean if, yes if it come in a command a cartoony commander keen platformer coming out this day like that's not for anybody under 40 <laughs> i mean except maybe me and i'm 39 yeah. so uh yeah like i mean and, and that was i mean yeah, I, I I'm sorry. Like, if that's gonna if if that if it's a free to play Commander Keen game that can get kids interested in it, maybe they'll do something else in that in that universe, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I, I'm just I'm just glad that they did not decide to let that that IP uh, languish anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I do I, I again will not engage with this because it's not really how I play games. But uh, yeah. But hopefully, like, if something more were to come out from it in the future, yeah, I'd check it out. Mm-hmm. Almost yeah. without hesitation. Yeah, for um, sure. They're and, they're showing the Avengers game right now. I was just distracted a little bit. How's it I, look? It look all right. It looks like. Uh, let's just say when they showed a little bit of gameplay from Black Widow, it looked like uh, they lifted those animations right out of Tomb Raider. Awesome. So. That's what I'm assuming it looks like. And then now all the voice actors are sitting on a couch. Uh, Nolan North, Troy Baker, uh, you know, all the, all the, uh, let's just say it's all the heavy hitters in the voice acting industry are sitting ah, on the couch okay. right now. So the, the voice actors union present and accounted for in Square yep. Enix. Yep. Okay. So I am going to, we're going to, we're, we're about 10 minutes after 10. Uh, we're going to, Quit the E3 talk. I know there's a one, one or two conferences. I mean, uh, Ubisoft, have- Ubisoft, the only game I really <clears throat> wanted to touch on was Gods and Monsters, mm-hmm. which looks really, really cool. Uh, well, apparently, apparently I missed like some of Ubisoft concert. Or co- conference, just so just I'm- watch the trailer. It's two minutes long. That's all you need. I'll, I'll right. go back and watch it again at some yeah. point. We can talk about it next week. Um, that Devolver, I haven't watched all of, and then Square's going on right now, and I haven't watched it. I think we still have Nintendo to come tomorrow, uh-huh. so so we're gonna we're gonna do game time like super quick. Uh, so Corey, what have you played this week? Uh, well, all that Stadia and Destiny 
talk got me really back into Destiny. I played a lot of Destiny this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> did you, ever, did you ever check out check out Void Bastards? Uh, no, I did not. I downloaded it. Uh, that's about as far as I got. But sure. uh, let's just say I played so much Destiny that I leveled a Titan from level one to level fifty, and from the lowest light level to uh, I think I'm like at five sixty right now in uh, about five days. That'll do, Derek. That'll yeah. do. Yeah. So. Um, I am. I. Do you have anything else? Uh, not really. No. I okay. played some Switch stuff. I did play some Team Sonic Racing, which, if you're gonna pick up a kart racer on Switch, it's not gonna be this one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's my opinion. That's my quick opinion. So. All right. But. I finished Gato Roboto. Ah, uh, yes, I did play a little bit of that as well. And that game is good. It, it's fun. It ends real nicely. Um, and uh, and yeah, I enjoyed my time with it. Uh, and then I am working on the final trophy in Sekiro. I by the t- by next week I should have my 125th platinum. That's awesome. Uh, and that's all I've got. Do you have anything else to add? I kind of stepped in there. No, it's fine. I don't really have anything else to add. I, I mean, I've been busy trying to get ready for E3 stuff and, you know, mm. and plus, you know, family stuff and personal stuff. So, yeah. um, uh, actually speaking of Sekiro, a um, couple of developments happened with regards to the spoiler cast. I am, I had a, a couple of guests lined up, but I am not going to be able to schedule it in a timely fashion. So I have actually put the kibosh on doing that. Um, I had, uh, I had uh, Moose hooked me up with uh, Richie two T's and um, Michaela from obelisk. I was going to talk with both of them uh, and I just, some personal things have come up and I'm just unable to actually schedule it. So uh, thank you to both of them for at least responding and talking to me about scheduling that. I, I am sorry to have wasted their time. I have apologized to them individually, like apart from this. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, I got to deal with life. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now let's just, we're going to, we're going to finish out the show with listener questions. What do you say, Corey? Let's do it. All right. First off, the man, the myth, the legend, Deshaun Malone. With hmm. Stadia and Xbox really pushing streaming, what are your thoughts on this tech? And is it something you're excited for? Well, <laughs> I think I can say yeah. Yeah. I mean, I for certain things I am, right? Yeah. Like, honestly, I think the persistent online games are going to benefit the most from this, believe it or not. Agreed. Uh, because most of it is actually done server side anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and like, there's just some small data points that are installed on your box or whatever and, uh, updates and everything, but like you're playing on the, in the world server side anyway. Right. And, and I think if everything is in one spot, theoretically, right. Like your inputs are going to one spot. The game is loaded in one spot like all that kind of might actually cut down on some of the loading and the, you know, maybe some of the lag that you experience, even though like that's the opposite of what people are thinking right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I think destiny, the division, uh, uh, Anthem theoretically, uh, can all actually benefit from this type of service. Uh, and that's what I'm most excited for. Plus the fact that I'll be able to, take my guardian anywhere on any platform and stream it, play it on my Xbox, play it on stadia, play it on PlayStation, play it on PC, that kind of thing. Like that's exciting to me And and seeing more games do that uh, with, with cross play or with cross save cross progression, you know, maybe we'll see more games start to accommodate at least the cross progression style thing. You know, because cr- cross cross play is tough, right? Because mm-hmm. you got to deal with different network infrastructures and putting them all into one thing, yeah. and and you know, Apex uh, or Respawn already said that it is actually it would take a lot of work to merge the networks to be cross play, mm-hmm. and that's totally understandable. Yeah. But if if you can 
have that cross progression functionality the way that Fortnite and Destiny are doing now and and just be able to take your character dep- no matter what platform no matter where your friends are and everything that's the type of thing that I think the streaming stuff is is actually going to really help with and I that's what makes me excited uh you know I haven't really told a lot of people this but my my dad and I are planning a trip and f- next year together just me and him mm-hmm. you know because it's something that i've actually wanted to do for a while and uh we're actually gonna try to make it happen next year and you know i'm 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 gonna take some stuff with me to entertain myself while we're there right like i'm not gonna yeah. just i mean we're gonna obviously this is not the whole point is to not play games the whole time you know sure. obviously but like when we're you know in the hotel or whatever let you get, down. get winding down whatever like yeah, I can take my switch, obviously, but like, wouldn't it be really exciting to take a Stadia controller and play Destiny on my phone for an hour before bed? Mm-hmm. Grind out some bounties or or grind a piece of gear that I've been hunting for for a while. Like, or hook up a Chromecast and do it on the TV. Yeah, that yeah, you know, like, and that that's that's exciting. Or you know, if I'm playing Gears Five and I'm wanting to you know just play a couple campaign levels, I can take my Xbox controller with me and play on my phone, and right. that's that's exciting too, you know. And those are the types of things that make me really excited. And I think, I think uh, in a weird way, the Switch has actually made me come around on this technology more mm-hmm. because you know, not that the Switch is cloud based, but you can take your games anywhere and that's the aspect that I'm really excited for. And I think that's why I'm excited for the Xbox side of the tech because yeah, it's downloaded on my console, but the, my console also acts as my own personal server. So I can just stream it from my console to my phone instead of going through data centers or, you know, bad Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm excited for it just because, um, the next step with this type of tech has to happen. Mm -hmm. And I I think the only way for it to happen is if there is some sort of uh, consumer demand Mm -hmm. on it. And not not even demand, just like involvement in it. Right. You have to have that group of people that's going to prove the technology works too. And that's, I think, I think, see, here's the thing. Like, I think, there are companies, there are, there are, there are big companies in this country that recognize that online infrastructure is poor and needs to be fixed and needs to be updated. And while, <clears throat> while there's, uh, while, while there's, uh, a governmental lobby kind of against that, um it won't it, w- it won't really happen but if you can pr- if if you can prove like anecdotally that that it is a thing that needs to be looked at like and the only way to really prove that is from uh, a, a financial aspect like if you can pr- if you can pr- prove there's financial demand for it then you will supply it mm-hmm. um and i think that this is a, this is a way to push that forward um, I also think that uh, there's, and and you know, and and some of my statement n- might be incorrect, uh, and and I, I, this is because I'm not smart, but uh, that's just sort of the way I look at it. Because let's let's face it, internet in this country is not very good, and it it has never been at the forefront of anything as far as i know except maybe at the very beginning of the internet when nobody else had it i mean and that's again knowledge outside of my scope but i think that i'm i'm also like interested in 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 new things uh new ways to play um and if this is a new way to play that is viable fine i mean like look i was this close to buying an Ouya when it came out. Um, and then when I saw, when I saw it in action, I saw all the problems with it. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. No, I'm not going to, 
I'm not going to lie. I was one of those people who walked into a GameStop one time and thought the Engage looked cool because you could play Tony Hawk on a phone. Yeah, like I mean, all 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 of those <laughs> things, all of those things look really interesting until you you start really exploring like viability of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, why did I do the Founders thing? Because it's only one hundred thirty dollars. Like. If it were, if if they would have said, "Hey, two ninety nine, you have all of this," I would have been like, "Nope." If it, they they had to come in at a super low price, um, and if if the pro membership that I get for three months it proves to not be worth it, done, canceled, mm-hmm. bounced. Like I, I, I and I will I will wait for either it to get better or. I will understand the shame of wasting the money that I did, but you never know until you try. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing too, is like this tech is like, I mean, if you already have an Xbox, the tech is free, mm-hmm. right? I mean, they're just providing it with your, uh, I think it's, I, I think it's free. Like if you have an Xbox, it's free, you know? Or if you mm-hmm. have an Xbox Live account, it's free. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and they, I think it's, I, they haven't clarified if it's like Xbox Live Gold members get this tech or anything, but, uh, and the Google is relatively cheap too. You know, it's ten bucks a month. It's ten bucks yeah. to try it out. I'm sure they'll have a free trial, like I said earlier. Uh, any controller works. Like it's just this tech is fascinating because it's going to get more people in the door who can't afford a console at launch. That's the big thing too. So, yeah. Um, I think we can move on to Sam Hall's question. Yep. So death stranding and final fantasy seven have dates. <laughs> Do they hit them? No. <laughs> um, I actually think death stranding will, I think death stranding will hit its date. Uh, I also think that there will probably be a multi gigabyte patch day one. And I also think that it might not work the greatest. Um, I think. Actually, I think, you know what? No, that's probably wrong. I, it, you know, it, it'll probably hit its date, and it'll it'll probably work fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll have the day one patch because everything has a day one patch. Um, True. <clears throat> uh, I don't know what Final Fantasy VII's release date is. It's March twentieth, I think, is what they said. <sighs> 2020 uh let me let me reconfirm that because i'm i'm not i here here's the thing i think they put that date out there to get people to stop talking that and to be inside of the fiscal year yeah Uh, they're gonna do everything they can to hit that date let's see uh Um, avengers is may 15th uh which didn't really blow me away to be honest with you, but that's just me. Uh, I just, I just was watching some of it. Uh, it's, it's March, March 3rd, 2020. It's final fantasy. I have a feeling that they could also miss that date. Yeah. But Uh, it is, but it is episodic. So it's not like they have to rebuild everything from final fantasy seven. Yeah, it doesn't. They said it wasn't episodic. Oh, they, they walk that back now. Yeah. According to the conference, it is not episodic. It is just called Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it is coming out March 3rd. Oh, that won't hit it then. No. Because they, they restarted development, didn't they? Yeah, but they could have used assets and cleaned them up, you know, sure. instead of like totally re- scrapping. It's not like a Metroid Prime situation, I don't think. True. Um, um you know, I'll bet you, I'll, I'll bet you, Death Stranding hits Final Fantasy VII doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I'm wrong, whatever. Uh, yeah. Last question for the night, Amanda Davidson. What's been the highlight so far for you guys? Now, Amanda does not say highlight of what. I'm assuming I'd E3. Glad it's E3, but hey, let's just take this out to its own abstract conclusion. I I don't know how much I don't know how much this. I had really good chili for dinner. 
that did you? Our, yeah, and my partner made really good chili. <laughs> and that's been my highlight. No. Um, I mean, but, this might speak to how low E3 is this year, but the Destiny cross save stuff is a pretty big deal for me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But see, that that's because you you have a you have a Destiny problem in the way that Moose has a Bloodborne problem. I I that's fair, but also to be fair, and, the and, Des- and, Destiny content keeps changing. The Bloodborne that, content is the has been the same for four years. <laughs> true, true, very true. Again, uh, but. Uh, also, like Google Stadia is saying, no, no, it's okay for you to have your problem. You can play it anywhere. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> they're they're enhancing my problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just yeah, they're just creating more access for it. Um, I think the highlight for me, game wise, is, is definitely Doom. Um, yeah. But also, like, I think that it speaks to. I like this, this this just has not been a it's it's not been a very bombastic E3. It's the calm before next year's storm. Yeah, I think I think I think next year is going to be well, if E3 happens cuz there are rumors that it's not happening next year. There are already rumors circulating. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um <laughs> but uh like uh game wise it's definitely doom. Uh presenter wise it's definitely I- Ikumi Nakamura. Uh, she brought fantastic energy to, to talking about uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, and and I, I, I'm really going to watch that game now. Um, also, like it's nice to see that From Software is, is continuing creating new things rather than sequelizing everything. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, it's. It's not. It's not been the. It's not been the greatest three. I still have to watch Devolver and Ubisoft and. And to Sword. be fair, to be fair, you know, Nintendo hasn't happened yet as of this recording, which I'm actually super excited for. Yeah. Um. You know, and I'm. I'm excited. For, I'm excited for Halo Infinite. You know, I, I'm. I'm a big Halo fan, and Gears Five, even though it didn't really show a lot. Uh. I, I think the I think the collective uh, most excited thing though is the Keanu Reeves reveal, <laughs> even if you're not interested in cyberpunk whatsoever. Oh, definitely. So definitely, like that was a that was a heartwarming thing. Yeah. So for for me, that kind of seemed like that was the uh, icing on the cake for most people. Uh, you know, it just it it's just the calm before the storm, you know, and that's. That's okay. You know, mm-hmm. I, we don't need to have a huge E3 every year. <laughs> no, we don't. So we don't. And, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're just lucky that the unstoppable tide of games just keeps happening. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I think with that, we can, we can call episode 149 concluded. Uh, if you are, if you, man, oh, yeah. Uh, if you would like to have your question answered, all you have to do is email us at nerdsgonerogue.com or nerdsgonerogue at gmail.com. Visit our, visit our website, uh, nerdsgonerogue.com. That's where you'll find everything we do. Uh, that's this show, the NX show, Nerds Gone Platinum, NGR Radio B-Sides. Uh, this show happens every Monday on YouTube, youtube.com slash nerdsgonerogue. It goes live on... Uh, on in an edited form the next week on podcast services all over the world as well as Spotify and iHeartRadio. My name is Matthew Keel. You can find you for, me at. You forgot one important thing, Matt. What? What did I forget? We're on Twitch now. Oh shit! Uh, too many things to remember. We are on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Nerds Gone Rogue. Some of you are watching us on there right now. I'm assuming. I know Someone I was. I know I was. Um, <clears throat> Someone is. I had it open. I said, "What's up?" Actually, you said, "Sup, sup." Whatever. Um, <laughs> sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I, I'm developing a need to go to the bathroom, so I'm trying to concentrate on this 
and then the show and you're just you're just creating a ticking time bomb for yourself i know i have to pee real bad too well, it's for me i don't know uh but yeah so if you if you want to get in touch with us uh nerds gone rogue at gmail.com you can find everything we do at nerds gone rogue.com my name is matthew keel you can find me at infinite underscore rewind everywhere you could possibly imagine uh cory take us home uh you can find me at cory and hc 713 on twitter and Corey and HC on Twitter and, or on uh, Instagram and Twitch. Uh, you can find me also on the NX show and you can also find all of our content. Like Matt said on nerds gone uh, I think that's about it. Matt, these last couple episodes, just you and me. Been yeah. a good time. A couple a good firesides, time. not bad. Not, not, not too shabby. You know, Yeah. you know, it's the calm before the 150 storm. You know what I mean? Yes. You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't look for another best of episode, guys. I'm not doing it. No. I will someday, but not not today. Okay. We got to go. It's true. Banana and out. Until next time, we love.